uh, and, and maybe even repetitiously <laughs> something that we have talked about many times, and that is the name. You know, we sung about it, Rachel prayed about it, others as well. You know, Jesus said, whenever you ask in my name, um, and, you know, there, there is a, a very strong usage of the name of Jesus in Christianity. Mm. <clears throat> I, I don't know how everyone uses the name. Mm. But what I do know is what the name means. Mm. And I want for us to be reminded mm. of what the name is. Mm. It's not a formula. And it's not a, a token And the name represents the heart and the purpose of the person. Mm -hmm. What that person represents. Mm -hmm. What their life is for. Mm -hmm. What they desire. Mm -hmm. The way that they do things. Mm -hmm. The way that they look at things. The way that they interact with others. Mm -hmm. The way that they handle situations. The way that they take in joy, the way that they express sorrow, Mm. the things that anger them, Mm. the things that make them weep, the things that motivate them Mm. and and propel them Mm. into action. Mm. What causes our God and Father to rise up from his throne? to extend his right arm out, to move with wrath, or to kneel down with compassion, to lay aside his nobility and run for the lost son, to stand with sternness and unmovable, unshakable resolve. That's the name. And that's why the name has power. Jesus was exemplifying the reality that it was possible for a life to represent the name of the Father Mm -hmm. to such an extent that it would be in his own name. Now, Jesus' name is yet unique in and among the names of the Son of Men, the sons of men, and among the sons of God, because he was uniquely set apart by the Father to make a a provision, a sacrifice in a way for us that no other man could do and no other man will ever be capable of doing. Because he was the first example, the first example, the first fruits of what it meant to fully represent the name of the Father. Then the Lord said, God said, I will give him a name that is above every other name. Mm -hmm. But let us also know that Jesus himself said to he who overcomes the world Mm -hmm. and all that the world represents, Mm -hmm. that one also will be given a name Mm -hmm. only known to him and to me, the father and the son. It's a unique relationship. Mm -hmm. So when we pray in the name of Jesus, we're not just making sure we say the word Jesus. It's not a formula in prayer. I would recommend that if, if, if it is your habit to only end a prayer in such a way, Mm -hmm. with such a flippant use Mm -hmm. of God's, name of power Mm. and purpose, then don't say it. Mm. And and I'm not being trying to be restrictive. Mm. We want to be wholehearted and sincere in what we do, never casual Mm. and never making common something that is so holy Mm. and full of power Mm. because that is something that was given to the people of God that is not given to any other part of creation nor the rest of humanity. Mm. It is unique to God's family. Mm -hmm. It is only those in the corporate body of the citizens of God's kingdom 
that can bear his name. No others can bear the name. Not only are they not capable or allowed to carry the name as a banner or as a mark on their life. Outside of the context of God's family, the name is unbearable. It repels. It silences. It scatters. That was represented in Jesus' life even while his, during his ministry here on earth. So I won't expound further than that. I think that's enough of what we already know. But let us in our midst, as Jesus recommended to his own disciples, let us hallow the name of our God. There's a lot of religious pretense surrounded, surrounding the name of God. And a lot of people act very religiously in regards to that name. And in fact, the more religiously careful that we were with and that the Jewish people became with the name of God, the further they were from it. In their efforts to, to not say Yahweh. To only utter the syllables or to change it to some other thing so as to keep the name of God hallowed. But it became a, a some sort of perverted imprint in their heart and their mind because although they were careful about their name, the way they thought about it and the way that it applied to their life, that's why God said, you honor me with your lips, with your yahs and your silences, but your hearts are far from me. And Lord God, I pray that we will, we will honor you with our lips, but we will draw near to you and stay near to you with our hearts, with our lives, with the way that we think, with the way that we relate to one another, with the way that we handle circumstances in our life, with the way that we relate to the world. Lord, we count it as a privilege to bear your name. It, it is a joy to utter your name. It is a privilege to speak the name of Jesus, the Son of God. It is un, indescribable to explain what it means to be called by your name to be numbered as one in your household to be considered as a son to you so let us with all honor and reverence and sincerity hallow your name father amen and put your name, Jesus, in its rightful place. The place your father, our father, put it. Mm. You are our honored mm. elder brother. Mm. Yet you have honored us. Mm. You have included us. Mm. With great joy in your heart. Mm. With wild anticipation mm. of the fulfillment of of your father's whole plan as our brother Matt played parade mm -hmm. the whole plan of God we want to know more mm -hmm. of your heart and of your ways oh, we give you glory Lord mm -hmm. we honor you yes, Lord. and yes Lord we pray in your name mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I was uh, in the chat with uh, Brother Romeo last night, you know, trying to hold back the stories. Um, but, um, you know, he had. Uh, 
a very strange life situation. Some strange friend, but the cry that with those life situations that may God raise up somewhere else, replace us. You know, mm-hmm. if we found greater freedom or liberty to to do God's will. Um, a few days ago, he 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 fell on the, on the ground. You know, has has it out. Ronnie? Yes. Mm-hmm. So he still hurt his finger right now. Mm-hmm. Hurt. But uh, while there, you know, Kara told me she rushed it, uh, to put it, you know, to found him on the floor. Mm. Uh, was praying, you know, praying to God to praise God. <laughs> yeah. But couple of weeks ago, I don't quite remember how long, uh, but the Lord put in my heart to pray for the daughter, tell the daughter to, to pray to God for some quiet time. Mm. She did. <coughs> she has some serious sign of illness. So, so the doctor informed her, said, you know, you know, do some surgery with some compounded on other things. She lost her teeth and that. So. Lot of suffering going on in that young lady's life. Keep hurting her, and uh, her, her. This time she heard the news. She was peaceful, you know, mm-hmm. willing to give all situation to the Lord. Mm-hmm. She, she basically surprised by her self response. Normally she would be agitated, upset. So the Lord has amazing ability to comfort and strengthen his own people. Mm-hmm. I don't the lesson or. <clears throat> change our present situation, but it definitely can be with you in the fire, in the water, you know, so mm-hmm. be with you in the middle of it all. I have a song earlier came to me. I, I don't want to stop praying. And, yeah. But let me read it with you, allow me to read it. <clears throat> Psalm 84. And uh, how loudly is your dwelling place, O oh Lord Almighty? <laughs> My soul yearns even faints for the courts of the Lord. <laughs> Have you been to the courts of the Lord? If not, maybe ask for Him to reveal. Mm. What his course look like to you? <laughs> Are you being placed by God in different position in the courts? Something very unique to a human soul or spirit, whatever. And God begin to change it, allow you to change the position, to engage him in, in different dynamics of the courts. The Bible tells us ultimately we sit at the right hand of God. And we sit down with Him. Really. I love you to do that. If He's your Father, He can show you a wonderful, mighty thing you don't know. But you must want it. You know, so. This is so yearn, yearn, said hard for pre- pilgrimage. This is a picture more than one man in the old time make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, right? From out of the nation, maybe. You know, the Jews do that. So this Muslim go to Makai, right? They so make one trip, this whole life seal up in order to make the Makai. The Buddhists do that as well, you know, to show their devotion. Intentionally suffer. You know, they will spread all the treasure to others or give to whatever the God worship. But they will suffer themselves on the pilgrimage to keep their heart and their deeds pure because they want God to look at that pilgrimage experience to give some rage or worship for them. It's not strange to Christians as well in the Middle Ages. Catholic and curse those kind of stuff. 
But the Bible tells us we are spiritual pilgrimages. The pilgrimage externally can do as much you can, but it's amount to very little when compare your spiritual pilgrimages. I think one of the great robbery of Christianity is don't encourage other to make a holy pilgrimage to be come close to God. We we have taught a wrong gospel in general. You're like a small child, everything is belong to you. That was never the beginning of any religion, especially God's religion, if there is a pure religion. God is a holy God, it's consuming fire. Paul said, no flesh blood can enter into the kingdom of God. You know, those are very much exemplified or taught through the tabernacle and right? through the temple story. These days we, we start some strange fire in worshiping God with thinking the consequences, you know. So those are hugely offensive to God. In John the Gospel term is made to not John chapter first John under the last part chapter. I reveal something to you. The Lord taught me every day. There are two kinds of offenses that make an offend God. One is through the personal holiness or so sinfulness. The other is a blessed person they deny his holiness. The two things. One is confessing his holy standard still stand us don't know how to do it, right? I may crush, I may struggle with it, but I don't deny his standard. But there is Christianity for the most part, I think I think it's okay to move the standard. Basically, we have preached the wrong gospel, presented the wrong God, and presented the wrong holiness to man. Then you don't have the spirit of holiness, what spirit are you gonna have? The supernatural pretty dubious to the holy God. That's what I mean, holy strange fire, the charismatic today is a full of strange fires. It's the Son of God's Spirit. You have many movements, many manifestations, many whatever going on. They are not the real Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a very, very sober, very weedy. We're holy. You tremble before the Holy Spirit. He definitely wants to ex express himself to you, liberate you with a pure joy and, and pure laughter. But he don't use you in a holy way. So when demonic spirit manifests from the Lord, the demonic spirit also subdued or touched by the spirit or repelled by the spirit. That is not manifestation of the Holy Spirit, that is manifestation of the dispelling mm -hmm. the, the demonic spirit. Mm -hmm. So actually yeah, like a reaction. Yeah, let me let me share something with you guys more. If you found a lot of physical manifestations or unnatural manifestation in the middle of a, a solid fellowship, that fellowship is never mature because the demons still running around. Our fellowship, through godly ways and God character building, you will find a peaceful, weighty, substantial growth in the spirit and things done in an orderly way, in a washing, gradually washing. The word sanctify you, right? Cleans you. That is always a proper sign, characteristic of uh, working ministry. Interesting, the big channel we have are so scattered, so misrepresenting God, how God works. We think the we doing discipleship, teaching the word of God, is not the right way. We always want to have events as manifestations. But as much manifestations, well, we're not in experience this, I'm telling you, they are unstable people. I mean, John and I, we went through that several years, I went through circles. People come back to the same vomit again and again and again. They never learn anything, actually, in the day. 
they all want to have some touch of the spirit, so called. But year after year, their life is remain the same, rather struggles, sins, crosses. To the best, they may have a so desire of God, not falling away. I'm just saying, we think those are people so busy, so noisy, so well, so, so most times they are the one calling all the attention. <laughs> we think those are Christianity. Actually, it's a, it's a false Christianity for sure. <laughs> those are people not supposed to have voice in the church. It sounds very crazy to think about it. Well, you think about the early church. Would Paul have that wrong, wrong? Jesus been wrong, wrong, wrong? He's teaching, right? He's a minister. Because the people didn't be quiet and learn the right way. Amen? Hallelujah. And submit to the works of the Holy Spirit through the church, to the leadership. So you can learn better, right? So grow better. No, we have reversed. We have given a lot because of Christianity is so lack of substance, so lack of confidence and provision of the Lord. We need something to prop up to show that we have a good ministry now. So we allow a demon to overtake the things that only spirit is supposed to take, to manifest. But the Bible clearly tells us in the early church, even after that, as the service goes on, manifest going on, they continued good work. The apostle teaching. And everybody excited by apostle teaching, right? Follow the apostle teaching. Fact. If the spirit confirm and manifest because of positive teaching, not reverse. Amen. The, the, the work of the Holy Spirit is a testimony in the overflow through a positive ministry. I'm saying this to you. So the important thing for us to crack our standard of what it means to be spiritual. We have a spiritual encounter, spiritual experience, spiritual gift, doesn't make you spiritual. What makes you spiritual is the sounds of spiritual life in you grow mightily and, and uh, substantially. That make you spiritual. The second is not a spiritual knowledge, knowing a lot of spiritual ministries or Bibles make you spiritual. Actually, make you work kernel. According to the Bible, by the way. Much knowledge of you. Oh, what knowledge are we talking about? Merely today we talk knowledge maybe intellectual knowledge, but the early days talking about spiritual knowledges, dreams, visions, right? So kind of stuff. Paul talking about that. So encounters, visitations, puff you up. Why puff you up? Simple. <laughs> Let's say Elijah is a son. Okay. You know, they have someone, maybe a messenger, whatever, a servant. He look at all kinds of things. The son is not allowed to look at all kinds of things yet. But it's great. He has access to God's table. The message look around the property, what I look at, tell you all kinds of information what's going on there. In your estate, right? In your kingdom. So who is really spiritual in terms of proximity, relation with God? The tender son in the tender age grew with a, a very solid, peaceful, quiet life in the house of God. That one is in God's mind, more spiritual than the one as a busy body. So most Christians through the ages are busy bodies. They have so much to say, but little to offer. A song. The second is, uh, well, if you really can teach the truth, <laughs> you don't need to prove your truth. The verse you indicate yourself, the sign you don't have the truth. Hold on, let me explain work. <laughs> it's a little philosophical. If I would go with it, do I busy with a proof that gold is, silver, that, uh, gold is better than silver? I lost advertising, do that. I'm gonna concentrate on what I got, what I'm gonna do with the gold. 
I mean, this is my goal to not purify. I need to be formed to a golden cup. I need to learn this stuff, am I? Make it sense to you guys? Do you get my point? Most Christians are so busy to argue that kids got the truth. That's a sign they don't get the truth. If you get the truth, you do growth in the Lord. You do all the things in the Lord. You enrich yourself in the Lord. You develop all relationship in part of what you have in the next person. That's you concentrate on. Amen? <coughs> That's all verse. The Spirit cannot help to guide you to do that. You can help to do that. That's a natural expression. You are under the dominance of the Holy Spirit. The other is an absolute sign. You are not under the dominance of the Spirit. You pursue something else. You're seized by some other things or lesser things, distracted things. So, in the early days, the apostles are fully aware of this. The apostles are not simply life, their life. Their life is full of controversies. They went through a lot. And then, with Jesus in their life, endeavors, they're not unsophisticated people, if you will. Know. They encounter all kinds of stuff. But they were always able to maintain a pure foundation, right? A holy standard. Amen? They were bold, clear with their mission, their discernment, and uh, their engagement with others. How so? <laughs> they learn the mystery, be innocent like a. Uh, be what? Jesus. Yes. Well, it means you know where the devil is up to. You don't deal with it, or maybe not make trouble for it. Doesn't mean you don't know how it operates, where it came from, who is influenced by it. Amen. But we're not interested always in picking a fight with the devil. We're interested in what? To let God life flow. Let God life be built in our life. That's a positive grace we met. But in that, however, there must be a differentiation of what kind of sin that believers or a body or whatever man is committing. So Paul, uh, John got the gospel in five here to talk about the baptism, okay? So let's see. Uh, in, in six, this is the one who comes by water and blood, by water and blood. Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. It is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. So what do you mean is by water and blood? Ah, think about the temple picture, okay? You sanctified before you enter the temple. But the blood, the sacrifice, opened the way to the throne of God and to the altar of God. So coming in is coming in the holy way. That's what it means. Amen? Let us think about it. So there are three that testify the spirit, the water, and the blood. What do you mean testify? It's fine something or as if we make a case, you know? Make a presentation. Argue a case, you know, so give a evidence something. Testify. That's true or not. That is not what here said. Here there is a is is a process of approval sealed with God's approval. Means it fulfilled some holy requirements. Therefore the spirit said, Yeah, that is a perfect. That's perfectly done. Like we go through sometimes today go through production line, assembly line, and somebody Seal is approved, you know, approved. And that's, uh, that's so the examine, right? So the one you examine it, it's a whole some kind of judgment there. But it's a, a working process, a process to produce a proper result. So the song made the way, the pattern song means he went through all this approval. Make sense to you? It's sealed with God's approval. But that sealed approval, God's approval, Come before that, there is not approval. And each is facing a different court. I mean, you don't go through a process without a legal violation. That's why I call it a verdict. 
it's a wording pronounced of something is legally processed. Amen? That's why the devil called the accuser. You don't get an accuser without a court. You don't get a judge without a court. You don't, you don't get vindicated, justified without the court. Those are all legal terms. Make it sense to you? That's why the Western legal system most are born from the Bible. It's not strange things. You see, Jesus, the early apostle, they were well familiar with this process because that's the everyday life. They use the scripture as well to make up a civilian and the religious and all kinds of affairs. Everything is used in the Old Testament to use it. But for the legal mind, the Pharisees are legal, teachers of the law. So our legal minds are like more than lawyers, let's see. Okay? Okay? You, you, get, you get that? And so when you have that, you understand that Jesus said, no, this legal construct, uh, when you fulfill it, you fulfill the law of righteousness, but you better have another righteousness. Your righteousness must surpass us as the Pharisees and the Lord, lead lawyer of the law. So that's why Paul talked about the spirit of the law. What I'm saying to you is that more than Christianity or Christianity as a whole has threw all those things down the drain. But don't embrace that anymore. We think legalism. You think, think about it being too religious. Therefore, we don't require young generations to come to senses, but better discipline yourself. You must maintain a holy life, holy attitude. I understand your struggle, but you can't lower the standard, and make your standard. The standard not up to anyone. For this reason, he made himself holy. For this reason, I sanctify myself, made myself holy. So that you can be made holy. He show you the way. So that's the standard. And that's the teaching, right? I say, my word washes you, my word sanctify you. I give you the word. Well, that word, well, that word will verify and confer to us is the testimony. So the three testifies the spirit, the water, and the blood. The blood is required by angels, right? Sorry, you know, when my sin, blood was shed in order to keep, you know, come back to the life of God. So. Water, you are born of this age. You're born into this, this age of this world, created water. Be judged water. What, once you sacrifice your, your dead, then your blood, you go to the fire, right? Get it burning. <coughs> blood, the fire, almost the same thing. It's a different way to look at it. It's an altar picture. These are the altar of a sacrifice. The three come in women. So the temple has the three setups for you. You washed, you burn, the blood or your spirit in your life goes in. You goes in that means you fully endowed. So the spirit testify means you fully endowed. Now you become a a son. You can sit down. And then hallelujah. Before you don't have the right to sit down. You don't even belong, maybe, to say, you know, so, make it sense to you guys, so, you can have to be proved. Now, all this process is being written off by some strange theologies <laughs> through the ages. But this is what John's speaking about, a, a spiritual pilgrimage you must make, without which you cannot or not approach the Holy God. You cannot sit down. You cannot approach the throne. Even the door, the ways are fully open for you through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. So when we mentally translate that experience, that I believe Jesus for all this benefit belongs to God, but our spirit, man, never go through this pattern with life. This a process of life. Go through this sealed approval. He was made holy and therefore he turned around to make as holy, make you perfect. You can't claim perfection. You have to go through a process to be perfected. Be perfected. And there are Christians said, you can never be perfected. 
That's a strange theory to me. Then why did he die for you? I make sense to you guys. You know, so. And what kind of faith is that? Are you believe a lie? Are you believe Jesus' saving power or redemptive power cannot accomplish work towards you? He is the author and the finisher for your faith. Finisher means perfected, like nothing, completed. So that's uh, just blasphemers to deny the gospel. And the false humility said, I cannot be perfect. Well, you know what? It's not by your definition, profession happened. Obviously, your mind is still blinded what that profession means. Religious. Dull. Perverted. Amen? Hallelujah. If somebody comes to me, I don't like the way he's eating rice. They're using chopsticks. You guys look at that as great pants. And that that is that's you know uh, all you should not use sauce, you use a slum to tell you part of your food. Who cares what you think? <laughs> I'm gonna eat my food, I'm gonna enjoy it, get out of my my room, man. <laughs> Don't make noise for me. But that's what most Christians do. Pick on the non-essentials and forfeit the true joy to share food with one another and to prepare food for one another. Get it? Those ideas, arguments about whether one can be prophetic or not. It's not something small. Because if you don't think a son can be prophetic in the Lord, you finally deny the gospel. You deny the Lord's sacrifice. You deny the whole way. You deny discipleship in the end of the day. You have a make-do kind of Christianity and weak Christianity. Something that the Lord will never have you about it. I paid the price. You didn't give me the result. I give you gold. You give me silver. Do you think the Lord will not require those people? Yes, He will. You perverted my holiness. Amen? That means you have given God's people a wrong standard. That's a sin cannot be forgiven. Let me give you very clear instruction here. That sin cannot be forgiven because perverted is a standard. Lower the standard. Amen? Hallelujah. Do you get my point? That's, it's deny the gospel. Deny the wish of the Lord. Deny the living operation God from heavenly place to give to the church. And most Christians don't take use with this. This is a fundamental issue. John is going to get upset. Lord, was, where, you, where you came from? I mean, you know, so, did I came die for nothing? Are you denying that I have the power to save man completely? I mean, well, let's see. John, Paul, Peter, all talk about the fullness of life, Christ Jesus, am I? Now, full provision, be fully sanctified, am I? To be just like him. This is the word book said, who says, shall be just like him. But that's kind of. Christianity, the devil has robbed uh, most Christians, especially on my come around. Oh, we greed, we'll be saved. We don't need the Lord, the Lord. We don't need to walk in some kind of uh, self-discipline and receive God's discipline. I mean, as long as we're good on the deathbed, we we don't. We don't do weird things, you know, from confess our sin. For sure we'll be saved. I will propose to you that is uh, not the gospel. That's a lie. Make it sense to you? That's a lie. Then you are egg. You, you, you know, some kind of egg. You come out of the old shelf life. If you really born out of uh, born again out of the old form of life 
Can you come down the back of the car with you and say, I'll never get out? You know, fly? It's impossible for the new life to be conditioned by the old realm of life unless you're not born again. Get it? Unless you're not there. I propose to you, most Christians never get there. Therefore, they will contend to produce false doctrines to tell you it's okay to remain in the old life. They are under the spirit of death and blindness. Dull of a hearing. That's what Jesus is continuing contending with his people, right? But if you're dull of hearing, you never encounter the immense freedom of the new life. What are you to teach anybody? I mean, give me a break. You never get a baptized out of the spirit. I mean, when they baptize the Holy Spirit, the first thing you want to tell a believer, I got baptized the Holy Spirit. That's inevitable. So, are you going to stop me to tell young people to get baptized the Holy Spirit? But by the way, why you don't teach that? <laughs> Who is right? I'll give you some uh, detectors. <clears throat> because they are stuck. They want you to stop. That's what I mean. Am I? Chip don't want the ego to rise up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, they need to be changed. Everyone had to be a part of the Holy Spirit according to the Bible. I don't know what that means. Maybe not speaking in tongues. I agree with that. This, uh, but the bad part of the Holy Spirit is a very unique saying. The Spirit can weed your life. The Spirit get a hold of you. They think that literally your natural man being reduced to a place almost nothing. Amen? Hallelujah. And the Spirit of God comes in. We have those moments the Spirit takes over us. Am I? We don't know how to express us. Ourselves. I'm not saying we try to make a show of it. <clears throat> But if the environment we have, we said that's wrong about you, rather celebrate that with you. That's a wrong Christianity, wrong Elijah. That's a wrong relation to have, wrong in the Lord, wrong. Am I right? You're a musician. I'm going to speak something, crack some religious shells. What a freaky thing. You have a musician like Noah learn to play music. He suddenly he, he, he wrote some word, beautiful piece to play with us, am right? I mean, if we are good musicians, we like Noah to succeed in music, and I enjoy music ourselves. Amen? We want to be a willing audience, cheer him on, so him do better, you know, like what he did. Do you have any sense of jealousy? Oh, so I think I'm supposed to do that. Make me feel bad about my music skills. <laughs> That's impossible. If you love music. I love Noah. Want him to see in, in the in the music. So is the spirit. So is the spirit. If somebody <laughs> excel in the spirit. I mean, I don't think anybody love the Lord. Want them to succeed in the Lord. <laughs> Lord will, will say, I'm not sure. You, you know you went up to? <laughs> I know the music. I know what it's up to. I know God has to do something wonderful that I don't even have. I want to know about it. I want to enjoy it. I want to get closer to that. The lesson of the music <laughs> list. I cannot play. <laughs> but I want to listen to somebody good with music play. So it's anointing. <laughs> It's called, the, it's called the anointing. You can use whatever word you want. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit. So people continue to damn, challenge, condition, rob the move of the Spirit. And they think they have the right to do that in the body of Christ. Are you kidding me? Let me expose you. You're in the flesh. You're against God. I hope you don't to a point Agree with the devil. 
Because that's where dangerous when you pridefully protest the move of the Holy Spirit. And in the end, there will be sins unforgiven. The Lord said, if you judge me or disgrace me, you know, bash me, that's okay. But if you're going to grieve the Holy Spirit, be careful, you'll be judged. What is saying? The Spirit is an objective thing. He has to tap in. He has to flow it. He don't have control about it. He may initiate it, God may move through him, but it's object thing like you look, look at the river, right? You swim with the river. You don't set the river up. Don't supposed to flow. It's not up to you. And God wants those who enlarge the flow, am I? Out of you will flow rivers in water. You're supposed to be a rich fountain head for it. Amen? Hallelujah. Somebody, we have a flow. Somebody said, Oh, don't tell me we're dry. Everything about your spiritual life is dry. Not too much green. <laughs> Are you going to tell us to copy your style? <laughs> Incredible! I'll give you some wake up call, young people. <laughs> Don't copy dead things. The dead, the empty shells. But you have the living grace of God to fill you up. And I hope we as a generation can guide you, counsel you, somehow exercise the influence. Whatever it is. We're going to celebrate you. We want to jump into a bigger river, jump into a more, more bigger fire. I mean, come on. We long for those things. We want to be this part of that bigger thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Rather than everybody pick on each other, eventually you lost nothing altogether. But Three agreement. So when this happened, three uh, three agreement. What do you mean three agreement? Well, the water is a sage for this creation. I need the government talk. <laughs> okay, the covenant fulfilled. Blood is an integral. Now, court is is is. <laughs> you walk away. That we to a higher through the. Father's court to receive the fullness of his sonship. Amen. Spirit testify. Hallelujah. Testify. Now, then you have the affirmation, your name you're written in heaven. Do you get that? Jesus was said, Yeah, I look at the word of the Spirit, and that then when it's sanctified, tall, it's done by me. Well, Father, here's another song. Let's acknowledge him in the court. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's acknowledge him before angels. Hallelujah. Let's uh, enlist him into our services. Let, him, let us send him to humanity to do something. Have you guys went through that process? Huh? Hey, hey. Get it? I'm not perfect. Peter was not perfect. Paul still said, I mean, Lord, he has so much authority inside. But he went through a process. I'm saying. But it's equally accessible to all of us. This is what, what the apostle ministry is about. <coughs> it build this economy, open this way to maintain this standard, if you will. And make provision there. Let's go on. Move forward. Fast forward. So, in 16, if anyone sees the brother committed sin that does not lead to death, so what so he said, he should pray and God will be in life. So, that is a, a sin can be remedied. Am I right? Remedy. Now, he has a duty to watch over or pray or help that brother. Ha! Ah. Part of brotherly love, by the way. But I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. 
I refer to those same Dharma lead to death. So in this context, what is the book about? The book talks about Antichrist spirit. The book talks about those who walk away from his ministry and denounced his uh, fellowship. For our fellowship with the Father, with the Son, they walk away from it and insist on another way to fellowship. The Antichrist spirit, this word talks about. So they make the word become flesh as non-truth. The word cannot sanctify another human being <laughs> to be holy son of God. Yeah. That's the whole essence of this book. Yeah. So what does it mean to lead to death? Paul, Peter literally said, those cancel my ministry, my teaching, this, this, this essence, representation, the Lord's life, eh? the community, the king of Nia. Those are the people who have violated the standard of holiness. And dishonor the ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Therefore, it's not forgivable. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, what else to do for to be John? I mean, it's not up to him. <laughs> he can only discern and discharge those discernment and warn others. That's what he can do, and right? Which he's doing today, this day, this moment. So, may I ask you, if you know something to die in the Lord, and he's your brother, or he's your children, then what do you think is a man supposed to do? If you don't have love in his heart, truth in his heart, he will just blur it away, right? But if he know clearly that is a boundary, don't go on the cross, young man, who has the cross, my brother the cross. What do you think to do? What do you do when the child runs the streets, a car is coming? He said it's Yak him, am I? He's not in the one. <laughs> Don't go to the street anymore. He's back him a little bit, maybe he's gone a little bit. Don't just run the streets, you know? There are cars everywhere, so, you know? <laughs> Pay attention. If we are sensible parents for that child, and a sensible, love, love the child life, and care about the child life, do you take that guy's do the bad thing to. to to save your child or tell your child to be a kid and do things. I think you appreciate it, right? This is like, I really care about my child, man. Better than me, <laughs> help me. <laughs> All right? Unless you don't care. Oh, interesting. Unless you don't love the child. Exposure! You don't really love others. That's why you don't do truth. That's why you don't stand up and make a case when the child life is in danger. That's by nature disqualify you being a servant of the Lord. You have to have love God in your heart, right? Care about others more than yourself. The same. You must be agitated, adamant in that devotion. Unless you don't know the standard, you don't know the difference. But any teacher of God's life, any minister of God's life, should know clearly the difference. It's not allowed to know, don't know the difference. I'm sorry. All right? Bad right? Yeah. Then you go to other Christianity or other places with your life run. <laughs> I hope your dad will appreciate me to tra trace you down. Said, what are you doing? That's <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> if you are the case, we we'll compare me to other minister or teachers. I said, well, get 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 a clear. That's I'm not here for that. I'm here for you. You know so. <laughs> And you don't get across with me, that's fine. Get across with God. Let's get that bottom line first, you know. So, I'm so bring you back to God. Face God yourself, you know. So, 
If God gets through you said I'm wrong, I don't even know what. Forgive me. Uh, please understand my intent, right? You know, <laughs> I care about you so much. I can't, I can't afford for not me doing something, even I'm in the wrong, right? So, you know my intent, my care is right. So forgive me, let me change, you know? So, make a sense to you, you know? Thank you for helping me to change. <laughs> but I wasn't denied that intensity of engagement. When your imam said your life internally is at stake. Amen? Is that control? Or emotionally <laughs> trying to play trick on you? Or the love of God compel me, the holiness of God, the, the, the burden of God, am I? Compel me to do That's my duty. Am I? That's what it means to be a spiritual leader. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't think this kind of thing. Oh, someday, some host, is that young man going to wake up, you know? If Andy don't necessarily chase you on that, how can you have the other time? <laughs> I'm just saying, I think that's a real love. That's a real care. I'm not free to be wrong, you know. I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But at least I wanted to take care of that life. That in the best light I want to do. I think that's a free expression of love. Well, that's the good church, the Eid. That's always true believer deed through the ages. Somehow we are signed up with another kind of Christianity. Not the kind of fellowship we all think it's going to work. It does not work. It never will work. Because you just grieve the Holy Spirit. You just replace the works of the Holy Spirit with something else. <coughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Let's look at this. Forward. And there is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying that it should pray about that. Oh, there's a boundary there. <laughs> All wrongdoing is sin, and there is a sin that not that does not lead to death. All boundary are uh, 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 lawlessness a sin. Basically, wrongdoing or lawlessness or lawlessness. Now, the, what's the key here? The key is denying this quiet karma in the flesh. That's what we say. He denied the life of Christ Jesus can be fully formed in you. Paul prayed, I pray Christ Jesus' life can be fully formed in you. So turn with me to Matthew. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stop teaching the hands on prayer time, worship time a little bit. Matthew chapter six, verse twenty seven. Crazy, huh? So, oh, I'm starting to it. Twelve chapter. Oh, this is there for it actually. It's so good. So he said. In 13, 12 chapter, Matthew 13. So they were arguing he is of the devil, right? And, and Jesus turned around to make a case for himself. He then said, he got tied up the strong man. What that strong man is? For the religious people, the strong man is a religious mindset that indoctrinated by the devil, right? To turn around and accuse Jesus. Let me talk about the strong man. That is a big strong man there. <laughs> anyway, so it's 13, he said. 30. 12, chapter 30. He who is not with me is against me. He who does not gather with me scanders. What that means? Is this talking about earthly gathering? No. He was talking about the spiritually, right? Spiritually. Spiritual kingdom. The last occasion said, leave them alone, you know, it's okay. You know? so those people are not spiritually against him. They will actually agree with him, doing actually he wants to do. He said, you know, you are not with us, don't stop them. You know, John tried to call 
<laughs> call call him out to attention saying the prayer for him. He said, no, no, it's, you know, we not interfere with them. So this one, however, is talking about the spiritual engagement with him in the kingdom or not with him in the kingdom. Uh, no, you look at me with uh, some kind of curiosity. You know who is with you in the kingdom or not <laughs> in the kingdom. It must cut the difference. Amen? Like in the battlefield, you don't know who is on your side. You're usually a soldier. You're confused soldier. In the spirit, you will not war against flesh blood, but in the spirit, we need to be wiser than some. Yes. So this one says, this, <laughs> there's no levy. <laughs> there's not much. Twin light zone, green field, <laughs> green area. <laughs> you must learn to do this. The spirit, the, the sword, the spirit is going to sever the marrow and the what is the bones or something. <laughs> you know, divide the spirit of the soul. Well, that's interesting, Elijah. If I look at you acting out a little bit, I'm going to look at whether the spirit or from the soul, right? When they speak differently, man, hallelujah. And you allow me to do that, am I? So make it sense to you? So, yeah. So, I think, oh, well, you know what? With all your passion, all your <laughs> whatever, their energy there, I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to bring down to the lady. Why, you know? Look at your own soul, man. So, <laughs> wander around like a beast. Flew around like a wild of weaver, you know. <laughs> Spread around like a wild of fire. Let's put that on. <laughs> and let's inaugurate the spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let's go on. So he says there, who is not with me against me, who does not gather with me scandal. So I tell you, every sin, but I think can be forgiven man, will be forgiven man. But the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven. Now that's a very interesting one. What it means against the spirit? Huh? Doctrines? I hope we don't think always like that. <laughs> it's a living way of God, living spirit. Now, this come back to the point is and you not married against the spirit. Actually, you're against spirit maybe because you're against the whistle. <laughs> That's a hard question to answer. You know, Andy is such a wonderful man, kind, friendly. Um, there are moments we don't necessarily click, right? <laughs> so I'm joking, so it's here. <laughs> I walk in the circle, I feel tense, all right? There are times, you know, right now it's all admirable, wonderful, you know, I give each other a hug. I'm joking with you. <laughs> Let me see, we have a relationship where I'm going, still struggling. What about you walking in a total stranger? Go to Japan, go to Russia. Amen? Hallelujah. Would you be able to share your heart, share the good things in life with anybody who is totally don't like you? You. Temper of Birkins, why you should have <laughs> in our bar. <laughs> Get out here. Right? He just casts you in some kind of light, right? <laughs> and everything you say, everything you do is offensive to him. And the other guy, you know, he wants to know American, want to know the culture. Yeah. American should have? Oh, I can practice my English. I want to know what that just look like. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Wow, <coughs> you know, can you tell me the Greek Canyon look like? Have you been Greek Canyon? We have different engagement, right? So is a thing, the spirit. It's a music. It's a common interest. When you walk in the spirit a lot, <laughs> you know who loves the spirit, who don't love the spirit. Who love the move by the spirit, yield to the spirit, endears them to the spirit. Who, those who are dumb, there's a lie. And you get it? It's a word tangible thing. We are just little puppies. 
our soul, our spirit is a living puppet. We follow the spirit. The spirit take the lead. <coughs> but why Jesus Christ cannot do miracle to teach in his own time? It's a question. <laughs> they literally refuse him being the son of God. I mean, they cannot do anything there. Amen? Hallelujah. He did a lot of miracles, he cast demons out, they're still not going to agree with him, he's the God going to do something with the Holy Spirit, you know. <laughs> he said, the Spirit is upon me, you know. <laughs> the, the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, I'm sorry, you know, Isaiah 61, in Luke 4, he <laughs> declared. So he declared that, they don't believe him. So, I mean, there's no way for him to do anything. Now, young people, you should not compel spiritual people to do anything. You know, believe in environment. They cannot do anything. Get it? Nor you expect yourself to do anything. You cannot do anything either. The Lord Jesus Christ, the mighty one, cannot do anything. Can you do anything? Can you do better? At my point. Can, you, can he do anything better for the Jews? But that a religious people said you should be able to do that. They never examined. They are the world problem. God cannot do anything. They are the problem. They are the stumbling block. They are the ceiling. They are the cage. Amen. Somebody played beautiful music. He tried to make noise on it. To cancel it out. I can play. Well, I'm going to play beat out of beat. And no advertise for beautiful player for beautiful music. You cancel the player because the music going on. I love music, but I don't like that person. Well, you just did. Very interesting. I'm telling you, those are religious traps. Those are dark corners of man's heart. Perverted thinking. And God can never work, endorse, and honor a perverted way of thinking. It's not in the basis of honor. It's in the basis of expose it, treat it out, and cleanse it up. That's the only thing can do. For the sake of everybody's good. If you're gonna move, I'm gonna move those things aside and gonna be the street. And don't surprise those things is exposed, chase all the way, dash to pieces, beat up like dust, blown away in the wind. But it's coming. You like it not, it's coming. This Western Christianity will be exposed as a wickedness, lawlessness, and pretension, pretentiousness. Mm. It was powerless, a misrepresentation of God's will, God's heart, and God's intent. Three things. Hallelujah. Three things in misrepresentation. I mean, don't tell me that is not perversion. Amen. Hallelujah. American first, American great. Who told you? Is that the the Bible told you? <laughs> then we talk about end time revival. <laughs> Is that God told you? Is it in the Bible? No, it's not. Clear now to the country. Amen? Hallelujah. America will be judged, exposed, put to shame. That's the Bible. So why are you against God's plan? Now people like me give a little bit of beat up. <laughs> message, contrary message. You think I'm not doing your service. I'm doing a great service to tell you, wake up from your terrible dreams. You don't know which side you are. <laughs> Sorry. I know this when the first year I walked with God, He showed to me.
on the 1st of August 2004. I remember the day. So it's not that overnight I suddenly got a new message. And never through the year, never lied about that. I always talk about it. <laughs> He's my witness. <laughs> but then I'm not interested in him. God gave me the scripture line to line, tell me what it is. <coughs> Anyways. <laughs> You're talking about the supernatural, it's quite a supernatural. So when that is set in stone for me at least, you know, I love work. I come here for a good life. It was so totally disappointing to me. I don't like to hear what I heard. <laughs> so <laughs> but when God said that, you know, do not not gonna have a discernment about so-called <laughs> believers and the idea of any time. I got the standard. <laughs> Amen? And by the way, you don't lie with the standard, I'm going to ask for why. Hmm. Why? Hey, God, I'm going to show me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's how you do it. Uh, by the way, how you do it? I don't know. That's how I did it. <laughs> I'm going to know why. I want to know why. I don't cut to your face, I see. <laughs> But at least ask God, why? Why those people do this? Why this and that? Why? 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 <laughs> he told me why. I don't come to your face tell you. <laughs> You're wrong, did I? But for the young generation, for the days ahead, God is going to move forward. We still have those things running wrong. As if this should have mean state of God's work, you know what I mean? We better wake up. That's a sin against God. That's my saying. There's a sin. Amen. We can be always forgiving, always accommodating, always be patient. Am I? But there is a sin. Stop the kingdom of God. Cancel God's work. That's when we're gonna fight the fight. <laughs> and all cost. Put me to the cross. It's fine. The Lord said <laughs> I'm not saying this to to challenge any particular person. But for us to be a remnant of the country. Um, the con what is the word? The, con the, con the, the concern or the topic continues. What do I mean to be a holy remnant? What make you a remnant? What mark you different than others? What make you will have the advantage or the endowment in the days ahead can be a torch for us, it can be a light host for others. And as I can follow your example. Those are there are features or characteristics for those things. With that, it's God's enabling. But unless we agree with that feature, seeking those characteristics, ask God to help us to make us that a special or peculiar people. Can he do anything? <coughs> That's my point. Mm. Certain people try to cancel that desire than the feature, than the endowment out from our young people, from our midst. You don't know what you're fighting for. You don't know what you're up against. You're up against God. God himself. Yeah, unless we are liars. I mean, I'm yeah, unless we are liars. <laughs> So let's move on. So anyone speak word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Either in this age or the in the age to come. You tell me that is not a terrifying without. That means on your deathbed you prepare and I'm not good enough. 
the same in the age to come. Not everything is remediable. Obviously. Thinking about you, Benji, you're gonna have a girlfriend and get married, okay? So, but you, you should marry the wrong girl. Is it remediable? The one against God's will, you know it's not for you, but you for some reason married anyway. Is God going to <coughs> say, hey, let's, t tomorrow you repent it, let's make it right for you? Or the rest of life going to be offset, right? By that decision. Is your children, let's see how children, <laughs> or relationship, is it going to be remedied? Or going to suffer the consequences of a mistake, this, that this is a mistake. That's inevitable. This is inevitable. God will forgive you. God will, can, can still do many good things in your environment. But uh, would you say God will give me a happy marriage? As if nothing happened, let's move on with your program. <laughs> That's not the Bible, okay? <laughs> That's not what I read. <laughs> Paul actually warned her to get it married very carefully who you get married to. But we have Christianity don't, have, uh, don't care about those fundamental topics, right? I mean, what more important affair in a man's life than have a marriage? Amen? I mean, what more important affair in a father's life than how, tell him how to raise up the son God? Those are major elements of godly culture. Amen? Hallelujah. We all need to work together, live together. But those are building blocks, major foundation stone for God and God's community. Amen? People come around and continue to move those foundation stones for God's people. How do you get upset? The zeal for the Lord calls. When dry last crazy, man. Right? Yeah, you cut my arm off. <laughs> I still can walk. But tell Benji to marry the wrong woman. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a fight. I'm just saying. There are things matter to God. Amen? There are things distinctly God mark us as a chosen people, peculiar people, need to conform into, endorse, make holy. Amen? To change into. That is not something we wanted to anybody to abide. No. You're not right to abide. Amen? Hallelujah. I don't want you to tell me how to do ministry this day. Unless you are my friend and I'm convinced you are fully sent by God. Am I? Just because you come somewhere, show it up, say I want to help. I'm saying to certain people, wake up. <laughs> it's not I be try to be ugly. I try to be honest with you, objective with you. To tell you God is up to something. Must yourself. Get it right. Amen? This is not a game. Amen? This is not a go there to drink a beer or drink some whiskey. This is not that kind of stuff. I give up my life on this. And I think the young people dedicate their life on this as well. So we can't achieve in this because of some small ideas. Unsolicited, unverified, untestified. All educated, all enlightened. Tell me how God taught you. Let me hear it out. Give me some living evidence. The Spirit has been teaching you. I trust Sister Kim being taught these days. That's all verse. You can't help to say that's being taught. The Spirit of God is mighty strong. She can't help herself even. I trust my brother Tom. <laughs> he threw all his past, uh, whatever, good or bad, ugly, into the drain, he move on with the Spirit. Oftentimes we 
we, we share a topic, if he, you, know, you have the same topic, or you share a topic, I don't have the same topic. Year in, year out. Right? Year in, year out. And we know we're not privately trying to call him, the Spirit of God doing it. Amen. Andy is beginning to be taught by the Lord, my wonderful way, even sometimes challenging, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've had a beautiful conversation with Zashi and Nicole. And then Zashi, after many years of a pastor, and all of thing, he, he's pretty honestly, I'm so sorry, Zashi, it's so. <laughs> he said, No, I want to I wanna be a, a open, you know. Uh, my heart will be open, my, my life will be open, so I can have a, a clean sleep for my children. I don't want this thing to inflict me, damage me, whatever the word, that it be without any check on my part to pass on the children. I want to, I want to do my life differently. What about you, brother? You're doing the same thing, right? You had a shirt going through a lot of overhaul these days. <laughs> it should happen. Because good is what you called for. It was called for. <clears throat> Hallelujah. When those gates shut, when the gates, right? The one word gates or door left shut. I think somebody had wisdom about that, right? Never mind. <laughs> Has a gate. Then God can have a safe environment for our children to flourish in. Hallelujah. Paste that up pray for us. I'm doing battle in the spirit. There is a power released, more than cast a demon out. A cow is going to change the culture for you. And then it's going to change you to be a new people. Go ahead. Lord, we want to embrace that holy power, Lord. That alien to this world power that comes from comes from the high heavenly realm. Lord, we thank you for the impartation, the revelation, the equipping through your ways, through your process. Lord, we recognize and are so grateful for you, Jesus, your, your obedience to the Father your example your proving of a way that is beyond human way Lord we confess our own inability to do anything in our own strength to understand anything to apprehend anything from you Lord, without the power of your Spirit. Mm. So Holy Spirit, we embrace your power and your truth. Mm. We, <clears throat> we come to you with joy and gladness mm. at your move. Mm. Lord, uh, at your, the freedom that you offer, mm. at the constriction that you give, mm. the discipline that you, that you bring. We thank you that that discipline produces life mm. and fruit. Mm. We desire to walk out and, and, and produce those fruits mm. of the Spirit. But we know that it comes first from the root, the seed. Mm. We do not seek the fruit first, but your life first, mm. so that the fruit may naturally come. Mm. We thank you that it can be seen. Mm that it is evident in our lives and Lord, we want more of it. So Lord, prune off the, the dead branches. Mm. We invite mm. uh, the burning fire. Look at the peace. Uh -huh. So we thank you mm. once again for the season this time. Thank you for all the work that you do, Lord. May we not shrink away, but embrace that power. Mm. Amen. Man, thank you, brother.
problem with me, this is crazy. Ten chapter now, the same to massive. And we finish on the score. And uh, let's 17 said, be on guard against men. Prior to that, in 16 said, I am sending out like a sheep among what? wolves. Therefore, be as sure as snakes as innocent doves. Just give instruction to the disciples. So did he give them a cheesy revivalist <laughs> environment? They give them a word, danger, confrontation, or full of conflict. Uh, John, right? <laughs> is that kind of Christianity we have today? I'm not trying to be ugly. Sell tickets, have music, have beautiful perk, change the nation, prefer the city. But your soul, you never know, thundering in the fence. Those souls never know who they are, actually, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's sad to say. I am sending you like a sh uh, sure like a snake and innocent like a, <laughs> like a dove. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over the local council, flock you. You know the story. Uh, then he tell it, it, in twenty seven four it will not be you speaking, but the spirit, huh? The spirit, what? Huh? Your father. It's the king three. And you have to be a son, right? You ought to have that spirit of father speaking through you, right? You say. Then in thirty, uh, twenty four said the student is not about his teacher, sorry about his master. It's enough for a student to be like a teacher, sorry, like a teacher. That word like is uh, John talking about in first John, that like is that you can be just like him, right? It's like him. I no longer call you slaves or, you know, I call you brothers, right? I have taught you the father's business. Everything I know the father has given to you. So elevate them, make them holy, right? He made them holy into a, a discipleship service. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, so, service. so anyway, so in 32, talk about the economy of the kingdom world. This is all about discipleship. Whoever acknowledge me before men, I'm your, you mentioned the name, right? Acknowledge him as a son of God. Now, it will be where we're on becoming philosophers and go as a perfect son of God. So it's Peter and Paul. Amen? But do they deny the message about the son of God? And they are ministering with that message? Man, Peter and Paul are going to be ugly. <laughs> very ugly and very, very quick. But what about today? That's my question. What kind of church you have? What kind of ministry you have? What kind of teaching you got? If the one minister you don't know the, the minister in the name of Son of God. That's something I apologize for. I know you're not perfect. I understand you're still growing. But the fundamental undergirding flow and reality is that you are representing Jesus in the minister of the life of assumption, right? Do we agree with that? We're producing a fellowship of discipleship for the life of assumption to flourish and fulfill each life, right? And corporately together mature into its fullness. Is that not the church? The minister of Allah? Now, if some spirit, some teaching, some fashion Christianity is called, come and say, that is not right, that can never be done, that's arrogant, that's abuse God's name, that's being prideful. My first question, where you came from? What have you been doing as a Christian? What kind of Christianity do you have, man? 
Let me, let me hear it. The fake. Denounce the gospel. Replace the gospel. Antichrist. Me both. <laughs> Who have more right and reason to be loud? We rely loud. Rely like a thunder. We keep up from the grave. Okay? The world has to be torn. Those are deadly gospels, deadly propositions. Absolutely in the way, stumbling block, in the will of the, the kingdom. Am I right? Amen. I don't want young people, precious young people, like Benji, Noah, sitting in between two opinions. No way. I'm making your mind by the influence of our teaching, make a decision as soon as possible for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm saying, hey, my son. We have rich garment to put it on, but you want to continue to put on another garment. Can we do anything? Well, at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you, I had to take off your garment a hundred times. This time is enough. <laughs> Let me put on the right garment for you. Amen? Hallelujah. You pray for us. Hallelujah. sons to draw near to you mm. Father Lord I continue to ask that you would Lord help us to be completely committed and submitted to you Lord mm. each day to Continually, Lord, come to you mm. and seek your counsel. Mm. Lord, help us not to to replace your purpose with our own thinking, Lord. Help us to to strive and be desperate for your ways in our life, Lord. Mm to replace our flesh, Lord. Mm. So that we can, Lord, have full access to your spirit, Lord. And your, your way, Father, that you so passionately are seeking, Lord, to build through your sons. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Continue to pray that, Lord, that we would not just mm admire lord the treasure you've given us but put it to its great use lord <laughs> continue to walk it out and to to further your kingdom amen lord i continue to pray for confidence mm. divine confidence divine confidence, confidence. Mm. yes <laughs> so that we can lord not be in doubt mm. and be firm Lord in our foundation mm. you can see. Lord may we always Lord mm. seek to do your will mm. for more than just our lives Lord Amen Amen well let me wrap up move on on this thought for the page so so in 32, acknowledge him, confess the name, before my Father in heaven. That's interesting. 
will have to think about that. But whoever disowns me before man, I will disown him before my father in heaven. That's interesting dynamic there. Think about it. They said, do not suppose I come to bring peace but a sword. But you know the story there, so I don't want to move on, move on with this 40. I'm talking about this economy of the ministry of the Son of God. 40 said, whoever receives you, not he talking about disciples, receives me. So first he said, me and the Father, that's talking about disciples, is a, is a disciple. Now then he said, once you believe that, I'm going to send you out. And whoever receives you, is going to receive me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. <laughs> Branch it out. A flow, right? River flow. Anyone who receives profit because the profit will receive, you know the story. <laughs> anyway, 42 said, anyone who give a cup of cold water, one of this little one, his disciples, because he is my disciple. Little one is a disciple. They're little still, <laughs> not fully mature. And he wants the people to treat them differently. How oh, interesting, huh? How that work out in today's Christianity? I don't know. I literally think it's irremediable. Everybody disciple. Everybody Christian. Everybody have a equal footing, equal right. <clears throat> Not the same. I mean, when you go to a church, you said, you know, right? I'm God's disciple. You would. Yeah, I'm a disciple as well. <laughs> I don't know, so I was trying to say something, it's not click there, you know. I don't, th I don't think they know either. <laughs> oh, they know either, yeah. But, but that is kind of culture, the opposite cannot play out, you know. So, something needs to be some kind of remedy, at least in our own life. Start with our own life, that's my point. You might be a cure for this lawless way, the beginning of the way. To tell you the truth, you will certainly not lose his reward. Now, fast forward, isn't it? Fast forward, please. In 11th chapter 25, I'm going to have Tim read the rest. Of so, what now? 11th chapter 25, 25. To, to the end. Yeah. Maybe you can take time to expand. Mm -hmm. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father. Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Ooh. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <laughs> it's light. Huh. One thing that I will expound a bit on is the verse 27 there, mm. where Jesus is saying that all things have been committed to him from his Father, and you know, that no one can know the Father unless the Son reveals him, mm. and no one can know the Son unless the Father reveals him that's an interesting it's almost like well then it's impossible for the son or the father to be revealed because if you're not a son you can't see the father and you if you don't know the father you can't know the son and so this actually is a picture of what god was i know that's always me going back to the beginning but it's what god was doing at the very beginning mm. with adam in expressing his intention with the creation of man 
the invisible God, the you know, animals and, and other created things are not necessarily consciously aware of their creator. But that is not the case with man. And even the angels, though they may be conscious of their creator, they cannot know him as a son. Mm. And so in order for father, for the, the, so the father, everything that we understand in relation to relational constructs in humanity mm. come from the father. Mm. They're part of who and what he is. Mm. They're not an invention of man. Mm. They're not, they're not even something that man has discovered about himself. Mm. They are in, in many ways, an unspeakable expression mm. of God mm. in his essence. Yes. It doesn't have anything to do with flesh mm. or creation at all. Mm. It's who and what he is before everything was created. Mm -hmm. And so in God's mind and heart, when he wanted to express himself, mm. And so some of the sentiment here is when there was a covenant that God wanted to make, there was no one great enough or greater than he with whom he could make the covenant. So he made the covenant with himself. Mm -hmm. So this, this again, this is a pre-creation thought mm. in God's mind and heart. Mm. How will I be expressed? How will what I am in essence? <laughs> See, we can't think of what... And who without flesh, bone, and, and some sort of physical manifestation, audible man, this, this manifestation, or, or it, something that has to do with the sensual life, the five senses. That's what we think is real. Yes. But there's another reality, and it doesn't have anything to do with those, mm -hmm. yet it's still tangible. Yes. It's still observable. Yes. It's still understandable. Mm -hmm. And that's God had that essence, obviously, in himself before creation. Mm -hmm. But when he decided to create, and his intention in creation was to express himself, mm -hmm. the, this is God. Mm -hmm. He knew that the only way mm -hmm. that he could, could fully manifest his essence was in a certain kind of relationship. And that relationship was the father-son relationship. That's why Jesus said it was the foundation of the church, the cornerstone, the rock, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the first stone laid and the capstone, the alpha and the omega. Everything is founded on this one principle of God's expression of himself. And that is, it's not just as a father, because a father's not a father without a son. And it's not just as son, because a son can't be a son without a father. Mm. Now that was this whole principle and con concept, if we want to call it that, mm. is what God was trying and has been trying to reveal or uncover to mankind. Mm. First to the, the first created, mm. then to the patriarchs, mm. then to the forefathers then to a nation, mm. then to many nations. Here's what I'm about. Here's who I am. Here's what I am. Mm. How is the I am that I am expressed? So come back to the, the passages that Emmanuel was touching on earlier. Well, if you don't believe that this is how God chose to express himself, we, that's a real problem. You don't know God at all. You have no, you, have, you don't have the first most basic fundamental expression from God himself of what he wanted to do. All creation falls into the order and into the purpose and for the means of fulfillment for God to be revealed in this way. So Jesus saying, no one knows the Father except for the Son. Well, he wanted to be revealed in this way. The prophets looked forward to that. The, even the Jews anticipated the revealing of the Son of God as the Messiah, the anointed one. Mm. But they didn't understand what that meant yet. But still, it was like a shroud on their mind. Mm. Even though they had previous uh, 
shadows uh, mm. that in types with David and Solomon and through the, the utterances of the prophets prior to that kingdoms mm. and after and during those kingdoms mm. and looking forward to mm. the coming of Christ. And so then even the the one of the final test old testament prophets before John uh, uh, Malachi says the same thing. You know, God's going to restore in the last day this fundamental relationship because it is only in that relationship that he can be revealed and that his son can be revealed. So it takes both. That's why it's not you can't have one and not the other. It's that they both must, they must, it takes both to manifest that life. And so Jesus is saying here, now we have this manifestation. This is what God wants to do. And so, in other words, no one can, until someone sees that, until the spirit of man or the spirit in a man, so that's a corporate uh, understanding or reception or and an individual reception. There is a recognition of something about the life of a son. Now, hear Peter's confession of Christ again. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asked. Some say this, some say that. The disciples said, but Peter said this. I believe you are the son of God. The son was revealed. The son was revealed. When questioned by Jesus on another occasion, you're going to leave too because of what I'm revealing about God. Peter was the one who said, where would we go, Lord? You have the words of life. You, you are the one who is, you are the manifestation of this life. What? So is it just the disciples? Was it just Jews? No. Upon seeing his death, the Roman centurion, a pagan, said, Surely this man was the Son of God. The Son was revealed. God was glorified. He was pleased to be glorified in his Son. So, the Son is individual. It, it applies to Christ. It applies to other sons mm. and it applies to the corporate man mm. of Christ. And that's why Jesus said, when the world sees the kind of relationship that you have with the father mm. and it's manifested in the way that you relate to others, because it's his love in you, through you, to one another and to the world, they will know me mm -hmm. because they will see me. Philip, don't you know? I mean, how long have I been with you? Mm. And you haven't seen the Father. Mm. That's going to be the same sentiment there mm. in when the, the man of Christ, the corporate man of Christ, mm. can begin to manifest. Mm. So this is in correlation to all creation groaning for the revelation or the manifestation, the coming forward, the expression of, the visible, tangible, observable expression mm. of sonship in a corporate body. That's right. Mm. That's what the world's, that's what creation's waiting for. Mm. And it hasn't matured. It's been rumbling under the surface or in the womb mm. of creation. Mm. And it's meant to burst or birth out. And then the world and all creation and the angels mm -hmm. and mankind in their sequential order, whatever God has ordained that to be, will have no other choice but say, that's the sun. Mm -hmm. Everything, everything in everything created in heaven, on the earth and under the earth will yield to that order of God's manifest self. And so Jesus is, is very much taking this down to the individual mm -hmm. basic <clears throat> principle. Mm -hmm. And the wisdom of man, the nobility of man, the pride of man, 
the capacity of man in his mind, which is a God-given capacity, mm -hmm. but unrestrained, unbridled, undisciplined, it can never discover it. No matter how many rockets we build to go to the furthest star, no matter what satellites we put in space to hear some wisdom from some distant civilization or knowledge base that we hope that will further enlighten us, give us some greater understanding of why we're here and why we're the only ones that we can find that exist. You can go all the way to the eternal ends, which means it's a pursuit that will never find its fulfillment, mm. ever. That's one of the some symbols of the vastness, eternal vastness of the universe. Mm. You will never find it. Mm. You can never search that depth in that way. But amazingly, the answer is it's so close mm. that it's fabricated into our being. Mm. You can't get closer than that. Mm. Mm. It is as near and warm as the body next to you. Mm. <laughs> That's crazy. God is near us. <laughs> and God says, I'm like, yeah, I'm, He's in the head. <laughs> and not only that, his revelation mm. is it's imminently pending mm. the opening yes. in the inner man. Yes. It is ready to flow out. So again, you know, no, no, no. if you believe in me, yeah. you know, in you will be rivers. That's the flow. It's just waiting for us to catch the flow. Can I share a testimony? If I don't, just, yeah, I don't want to stop you. When I was a week out from the deathbed, COVID-19, God rescued me, you know, for sure. Mm. I, John come to check me out, you know, that's the way not to talk. <laughs> so the first time I'm able to speak, so we pray together. It was wonderful. The whole body, you know. I've not heard him for a while, you know. <laughs> I wish I could hear him. Mm. And I, before I wake up, I, I, I know John's going to show up. Uh, I know God going to restore my health. I know I need to come back to the, to, the, to, the, to the terrible state anymore. I'm going to be good recovered. And uh, I also know this is the time something going to open up, spirit, spirit, you know. I saw God's scepter. I saw God just rising from the throne. I forgot the Father. <laughs> we record that, so it's like a mankind, like a, like a surface, and like a, this this wheel. I mean, this is a cloth. He he uses spear, you know, to, to top of this the, the what is it called the scepter. Scepter on the top is like a sword. You know, I'm sorry, the cut you know cut it open. You know. And then this is a, like, a, like, a, like a triangle, you know? Yeah. And the Lord told me, oh, you know, so it would, I, I am the teeth of the Spirit. Oh, my ministry. <laughs> so, <that's it. laughs> so I said, okay, Lord, you mean some time? <laughs> so, so I said, yeah, but you know. I said, Lord, this is uncanny, you know? I'm still in a dizzy mind. I don't want to make a presumption, you know? My mind is still not quite back to myself. I was out. So I said, if this is true, and uh, I want the team to come in and we pray together, maybe you can show him the same thing. <laughs> Literally before, so that's before he showed up and called you, you know? So having called in, huh? Well, how that happen? I forgot the whole experience, but he called in, we prayed together for a month or two, I'm not sure we were able to pray together. And sure enough, as we were praying, I said, hey, there's a God gave me a vision, I want you to pray and see it. He saw it. He described the perfect vision. <clears throat> I mean, for a long time, and I'm communicating, you know? We just, I'm out, so. God is doing something today. Today, I can't help to tell you that. No more. No more. Move on, young people. Be the one God made to be. We want you to, to be celebrated in your progress in life. 
Nobody want to look around to check on you whether you do the right thing or not. That's not the point. The point is your life come to be expressed in the fullness of God. You know what? We're going to the first one to you. I hope I can do that. <coughs> I, I didn't give up my life for nothing. I didn't give up my life for myself to be this or that in my own foolish imagination. And you guys should know that. I give my life for something greater than myself. The greater self is you guys. The work God is going to do, greater work will do. If we have the instrument for that, and there be a voice for that, and there be a spirit for that, so be it. Why not? Especially when God said that <laughs> this is your life. I, I, I was talking to Elijah a little bit. I said, you know, to know the will of the Lord, first you have to know about it, agree with it. The second way you want to do it, he, he, he <coughs> will about it. The third, you have to be willing to receive the power that he used to do it. <coughs> Amen? Three stages. I think I come to the final stage. <laughs> I said, Lord, there's no good in me. I cannot do nothing, but I'm willing. And I believe we'll do it. Amen? Hallelujah. And that landed on your younger generation. Mm -hmm. The mighty thing God's going to do in the days to come. But He's going to secure a seed. Secure committed people. And I highly, if somebody can hear me, do not touch the apple of God's eyes. If you really have to do it, you're going to be destroyed. Let me give you some word clear warning. I know the intensity God did it. You guys, yeah, yeah. There are certain things require fear trembling. Mark my word. I seldom promise as much. No, I'm doing it today. I'm saying, wake up. Don't touch God's holy things. We, through the years, see many people try to handle the holy thing of the Lord in an unbecoming manner, what have you, brother. We did something ourselves. We got in a lot of trouble ourselves. There's something greater than ourselves. You must understand, it's greater than you. Compared to that holy, greater thing, you're nothing. You're not that important. It's the path for the air. God wants you to exist, you don't. Get it? If God wants to use you, that is a grace honor. And Greece excitement should be. Who in the distance is the hawk has said, I'm really doing the will of the Lord? Let me use the word torture <laughs> or reckon of the souls. Really now? Really? I have went through many humble, wise, spiritual filled men. Continue dialogue that I think I'm doing God's will. And my encounter with them is the sure thing God gives them to do. I'm saying this, this is not to overwhelm things. I'm saying you, you, when you encounter things that nature, you have some concrete uh, confidence, am right? You don't second guess anymore. Noah, you called by God for a generation holier before you were <laughs> before we got to know each other were we? <laughs> you was a young baby. Something special about you. You and that, you and that, we was like, what's it happening, this boy? Six years old and you ask him to become a son <laughs> You remember that day? The, in the region, you open up, the dial fall upon you. Taught me about that and all this true what it means. <coughs> Benji, what about you? Did not God open your eyes? 
for your calling? Is that man did it or God did it? Elijah, God told him, right? And that's the pattern we want God to move in other young people's life. Invariably, they will do. If we fit the religious standard, make do, something we can miss because it doesn't click. I don't know how to explain it. The river goes somewhere. Because we're willing to receive it. <coughs> it does not go to the place where people are make up there. So it's like, and I, I, you don't tell the river how to flow. You become a willing valley, willing vessel, willing whatever. For him to flow, hallelujah, and that is a sovereign. Your leaders like us, we only be a good example of a whole it flow. We can, you know, say, "Hey, this is the flow in my life. This is how I receive the river, right?" So yeah, we receive our river, and that's how we did it. We try to show you the same way. This is why saying the same thing. The spirit is something the Father sent. The Father and the Spirit, my Father will tell you what to say, how to say it. Did He send my Spirit? So that means they are sound, minister of the sounds. You see, we read the scripture differently. Right? That means He didn't send a spiritual anointing in wine, like Elijah go there do it. He said, You will be a son of God, am I? In my name, do it. Let's just set up. I want to pray for you. <coughs> I pray especially for those, uh, you know, in those audiences. You might not quite acquainted with the context with the ministry, sonship, kingdom, or the meal system. The last day, God is going to raise up a holy remnant to, to, to minister in more clear and greater capacities to be a remedy for the lost ways of man. Amen. Hallelujah. You better be prepared. You are going to be different. Amen. Hallelujah. Other trying to cancel your difference. Righteous ones, am right? Not prideful ones. Be careful where they came from. If you're ignorant, that's fine. But if it's from the devil, we need to learn what? To stare the back, stare the down. Do you know what you're talking about? Let me really, let me really stare you back. <coughs> I'm going to stare you down. I want you to sort of tremble. I want your feet to give you. I want you to be terrified with my presence. So you better know who you're talking to. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't give in demons. You don't give in the de devil. That's when you pick a real fight. Stand tall, stand firm, stand strong. Amen? That's what the battle you're supposed to do. Let me see how, how strong you are, really. What are you going to do? Show me! And have nothing to lose at the game. God is on my side. Well, I'm afraid. Unless we are not there. That which we want to learn to be there. Amen. Hallelujah. The reason is good. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Oh, today? You know, no vision? Okay. Nobody have vision? Like I pray God come to visit it. Some of you. You can see things in the heavenlies. Something heavy in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Tim, you pray for us. Bless young people. Be strong. <coughs> Be strong. Have a great life in the Lord. Lord God is great. <laughs> God is great. Listen, God is great. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we continue to give you praise and glory and honor. For your living ways. 
Lord, we thank you. We want to continually express our thanksgiving that you, you are making yourself known. You are revealing to us the Son. And so that we may know you, Father. Lord, I pray there would be no hindrance, no resistance, no veil for our young people. No religious pretense. No old, weighty, dragging things. Mm. Lord, let, let us be free of them mm. so that they may have full liberty to learn, to grow, to mature in your house. Mm. Lord, draw them near and speak to their hearts. Mm. Renew their minds. Lord, enable them by your grace mm -hmm. to overcome all things in this life, in mm -hmm. the world. For your name's sake. For your name's sake. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Lord, wherever the enemy has and is posturing, mm -hmm. lurking around, mm -hmm. looking for weakness, mm -hmm. Lord, will you shine your light? Mm -hmm. Let us see it. Mm. And know it. Drive it out. Mm. Set the border. Mm. 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 Pada, pada, sini, Lord, that we might thrive. Pada, sini, gina, mana, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Pada, Within your walls. Mm. Pada, sina, na, mana, yeah. Thank you, Father. Lord, and there be content mm. and joyful. Pada, mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is a forgiving God, a merciful God. But Lalos is a God of a commitment, faithfulness, truth, just, clarity, holiness. So we must reconcile. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We must reconcile. Hallelujah. When we're not righteous, don't talk about the mercy. When we don't know our conscience is clean, not clean. Don't talk about the forgiveness. Amen? Hallelujah. When we're not righteous, not, not just, perverted, selfish. Don't talk about it. Try to guide others into righteousness. Amen? You're crooked. How you can guide others? To make sure the thing represents God, represents the name, but follow a standard. And if we're not there, confess we're not there, <laughs> but let's seek the same standard. <coughs> let's help out this one another. Amen? Hallelujah. Don't be a stronghold for people. When the devil shows up, you're scattered everywhere. You have nowhere to be found. It's the paper, paper top, paper, <laughs> paper castle. That's not right. Show me some fruit. Uh, and in Christian work, we must learn to disciple others. Amen? Hallelujah. A simple fact. Productivity represents you going to invest your life to others. The much to gain, much to learn, much to, be in, much to be trained up when we invest our life to others. Because there's a lot to learn. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. You, if you learn on one part, God is patient with you. You know, learn God to be patient with others through you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Be merciful to you. You can share that mercy, comforting you. You can share that comfort. Amen. Hallelujah. Share holiness with you. You're gonna try to make us. The Bible says so in this class. Make the holy. So <laughs> you're gonna learn discipline them. To sanctify them through the teaching of the word of God. Don't differentiate that as if only God can do it. Well then what are you used for? Are you a sister never flew out? A stack water just living there being still? No, you are living 
fountain. You are living river. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The more you give, the more you will receive. Hallelujah, thank you, Father. I want our sister to pray. Hallelujah, thank you, Father. Go ahead. Mm, we're staring at you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We desire more and more light, Lord, in you, more and more capacity, more and more activation in you, Lord. Thank you so much for what you're doing in our midst, even this morning, and for your spirit, for your word, for your careful attention to your body. I just bless what you've released and I ask Lord that you would allow it to enlarge us or to illuminate us just let your revelation take root and activation in us Lord let us respond in a real sincere way mm. Lord in a way that doesn't even depend on our own efforts to do so Lord but only on your grace mm. and ability to meet us where we are, Lord, with our most willing heart, with our most violent desire, mm. Lord, to ignite and to consume and transform. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless you, sister. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless our sister. Bless her. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sunny days are here, my sister. Hallelujah. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mama, son. The sun comes out. We pray for the sun coming out. Pretty cloud this morning. The sun right now shining on us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Soothe your day. Thank you, Lord. It's happy sunny. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to speak in the spirit today. I'm going to move in the spirit of the bless you. Listen, those have prophetic gift. I pray you will tune up in the spirit. You will see in the heaven. As you're going to see what God is doing in the heaven. Is nobody you have anything good? You will see what God is doing in the heaven. I pray you will. Because God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Anybody else on the other side? Mm. Hallelujah. I pray everything quiet. My fault. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shout to God in the, on the mountains. I heard that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You are a people. Nobody can hold you back, hold you down. Thank you, Father. Remember the first time I heard the song called Rise Up, you know? No grief or hope back, something like that. Nothing can tie me down. Rise mm. up. You know, it's a beautiful song. It's uh, Dallas, somewhere. Rise Again. Uh, rise Again. Yes. Mm. I, I remember I was singing that song. I'm not gonna die. <laughs> Nothing can hold me back. Wow. Nothing can tie me down. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Paul said, Sow demons or angels, death or life, this age or the age to come, separate you from the love of God. Oh, my. Something else there. Some and out there. Nothing can can separate you from God. Especially your own sin. <laughs> right? Especially your own shortcoming. Believe he will wash you clean. But believe more. 
I will make you great in him. Queen work you will do. And the worst, look at that, Jesus Christ said, and the harvest is, is ready in a, a few as harvesters. So let us pray God will make us harvesters in the field. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And by the way, there's a pray for Mr. Kamoa. He's a sick. There's a reply that mm -hmm. And uh, there might be some delays. So he's still working in the process. But uh, tomorrow morning, actually, we're going to meet the Moses. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. Tuesday was the uh, 10th. So I saw the better mood of the day. Tomorrow morning, we're going to have a time. With the Kenya sense, no others you know, I'm gonna be with the Kenya brothers tomorrow. Okay, so, yeah. so hallelujah, Lord, pray for that. Hallelujah. It's a long time waiting, so while it's got home, so I feel the Lord is pending to release a flood, a flood of blessing. The Lord has been teaching me about two flood, the flood of evil, the judgment that coming to the world, but the flood of grace. Flood of blessings come to his people. That's why I'm so, so very intense. That I was worried, by the way, by Sister Kim's vision about young people mm. in the flood of fire. <laughs> Is Kim there? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Hallelujah. Pray for us, Sister. Mm. <clears throat> Can you guys hear me? Mm hmm. Yeah. Lord God, we thank you so much for the way that your spirit is moving. I ask, Lord, that you continue to rise up in your people. Mm. Lord, move us. But give us discernment not to step without your direction. God, we ask for a continued exposure and correction in your mercy that would lead us in this holy way. God, I thank you so much that this isn't a journey or a path we have to take alone. Not only do you guide us, but Lord, you're surrounding us with your holy army. Continue to give us discernment and clear revelation of which side we're fighting with. Help us break any agreements we have with intimidation from the enemy. So we step forward, Lord, with your vision for your kingdom. Thank you for your river, the way that you have ordained it a flow. We pray for this continued process, Lord. Jesus. And that going through this particular order, Lord, you give us a testimony mm. of your goodness, <coughs> mercy, love, justice. Lord, this testimony of this process is such a fragrance, Lord and a delight to your heart. So let us not be afraid of it. Lord, we, we long mm. to expect your glory. Mm. Move in your people, Lord. Amen. Be honored <laughs> in our midst. <laughs> In your holy name, Lord, I pray these things. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
มากอืมอืมอ่าบอกบริษัทเอ่อจัสตินและนิคอลบอกไปเลยนะครับอาเลยแต่มาพิสูจน์วิจัยเราได้ยินส่วนฟิลฟรีแชร์กันสักอืมนี่ก็เดี๋ยวและในนี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นที่ที่มีความสวยงามและที่นี้เป็นI can tell that if you're looking at the tower off to the left, there's a stair, outdoor stair uh, case, and it's actually uh, steps of of lightning uh, up up into a a platform, and on this platform is just this extreme powerful energy source, and you can only see glimpses of it because. It's covered again with darkness, but the darkness is almost like a a veiling of it. And and every once in a while, you can see like a a small peak of of the tower source being exposed. Mm. Um. And the darkness actually holds is holding the pin. Mm. It's holding the tower source pin. Mm. Um. And then. I think what I believe the Lord was saying was, uh, "There's only one thing that can undo what is done here, because this actually wasn't a place of evil or darkness. Actually, it might even be like the kingdom of God or some sort of um, uh, yeah. I'll go, I'll go that far to say that because what I saw was." Um, People unified, and because of unity, this place was the darkness was undone. Mm. And when when there was unity, the light came, and you could see the kingdom in all of its beauty, and it was just magnificent. Mm. Um, and once the darkness was gone off of the entire area, I would say kingdom. Um, I looked over to where that light source was, or the power source was, and it was no longer bound in darkness. It was actually able to radiate throughout the whole entire land in like a heartbeat. You could see it <coughs> in, in the air as a clear um, power. It was, it was, you know, you couldn't see it with your natural eyes, but you could also see it in the spirit. Um, And it was almost—it was the strength of it, the heartbeat. It resonated in every available space in the air and, and everything. It just—it was. That makes sense. It just was mm. um, a part in every piece of its place. Um, it was no longer bound by the darkness. But the only thing that can take away the darkness, that can uncover the power source and let it be its power, is the unity. Mm. That was it. I mean, it, it, there had to be unity in the body. Or else, it wouldn't happen. Period. And that was just a strong, strong sense that that is the answer. Otherwise, things do not get blessed. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. 
Hallelujah. That's encouraging, sister. Pray for us. Then. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank Sorry, you should pray about this? Yes, pray for us. Mm, pray whatever the Lord put in your heart. Mm. She did come Father, thank you for the Lord. We approach your throne because we have the call upon your name. We have to ask, Lord, that you would reveal the things that keep us from you, God, and that you would let us fully understand that it's the need to grab hands and hands and to call on you together as a whole. I saw that this body being unified was what took away that dark. I saw that. I saw the prayers being lifted to you, being what uncovered that place. That was hidden in darkness. Father, what does it take to unify us? When will we see the importance of that? When will we let nothing come between the requirement of unity in your name? Yes, we all, we all have to let go of our flesh and our pride. All of us do. Every single one of us do. But Father, can we be can taught to do it together? Can can we see what you are doing that, that is guiding us towards a relationship with one another? Father, let there be nothing that we are willing to keep from each other. Let's pray over the spirit of pride and the community. If there is any, I know it's in me. I'll be the first to ask forgiveness, Lord. It actually quite draining and quite hurtful towards others in so many ways, Lord, and I just pray for the ex exposing and not from harm, the exposing, Lord, puts light into dark places. Let us be willing to be exposed in all these places, Father, so that we can be filled with your pure light. It's so pure and gentle and loving and full of joy. Our darkness cannot be where light is. Can't. Can't. And that's what you are showing, Lord. I feel like it's a strong word, but I can't stop saying it. My mouth won't stop moving. I can't stop letting words come. That describes the need to let go of the hidden places. These are high places. These are places that we have built altars to the to a different God. These high places that need to come down. Father, lift the veil. Open the, our eyes. Take the scales off. Remove the blinder. It has to be addressed each one of our lives. Because you have so much for us. So much. And you want to reveal it because you're so loving. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, it's nice. so faithful. But we have much, much to learn here. So much to learn. Oh, and we can be fast learners because you are so willing to teach and let it absorb into every fiber of our being. <laughs> you are so willing. Hallelujah. The fast track into your kingdom way, Lord. Hallelujah. So well. Thank you for that, Lord. We want to receive that. If we would just know how much we need to be undone, we're so willing to fill this back up. But the building back up is a braided in. It's a braided into one another. It cannot be done alone. And we cannot move forward until we realize we need to be braided in together. Pray, Father, that the reality becomes a reality because it's your reality. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> Thank you, Father, mm. for this time. Amen. Jesus In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jesus name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Halleluj
Hallelujah. Anybody else? Hallelujah. I did have a vision <laughs> as well. Yeah. Uh, it started, there weren't specific people, but I know it was our, some of our people who were praying, but they were almost as if they were hovering above, looking down over, it was like a barren wasteland. Mm -hmm. And so there was a scorching sun, the earth was just cracked and dry, mm -hmm. and uh, as there were three, I think three people there. And again, I don't, there weren't specific individuals, but as they begin to pray, uh, all of a sudden there is like a sweeping cloud formation that is coming through that is, is like a, a violent, you know, thunder, lightning, uh, and it, it blots out the sun. Mm. And you see that these people continue to be more fervent in prayer. Mm. And as they pray, all of a sudden uh, it starts to hail, but not like hail, mm. hail. It, mm. They're like boulders giant rock I'm, boulders oh, falling from the sky. So this is pretty high up. And as you see the the boulders crashing into the earth, it's mm -hmm. it's uh, causing valleys and, and, and mountains to rise up. Mm -hmm. And it's basically like a creation. It's forming mm -hmm. mountains and valleys, and, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still of a, a, a hard earth. Mm -hmm. as, the, as the dust kind of settles from that, you see the individuals again fervently mm -hmm. praying and praying and praying. And again, the clouds open up, and this time uh, it, it looks like rain at first, but instead of rain, it is arrows that are um, raining down upon this, this new earth. And as they uh, hit into the ground, they blossom like, like trees, so they grow up like trees. And there's mm. different trees, so there's, you know, there's like pines, there's uh, trees that have leaves. And so it goes all throughout this, this valley and on this mountaintop. And now this, uh, this area is lush and green. Mm -hmm. And almost immediately as this kind of uh, forms up, uh, the, the earth begins to shake mm -hmm. as these people continue to pray. And it's, every time it's more fervent prayers, mm -hmm. the earth shakes and there's a cracking of the ground and a rising up of the water from the earth. Wow. That formed uh, that forms the river that now extends as a as a waterfall in the distance, mm -hmm. uh, and, and at that point, I think it was uh, Kim had prayed something about being surrounded at that moment, and it was that that feeling of this is now a valley that has so uh, mm -hmm. out and flowing down and flowing patches of of open area mm -hmm. and these trees. Uh, and then uh, again, you look to the skies, and and the people are praying even more fervently now. Mm -hmm. And that the the clouds open up one more time, and they begin to drop things down that that again look like hail, but they're seeds. Mm -hmm. And as the seeds hit into the ground, uh, our people, as families begin to to like be birthed out of the earth, mm -hmm. and then all of the the trees that are there, or most of the trees that are there, begin to blossom, and so there's different kinds of fruits. Mm. You see that people that are raised up near the river are uh, are fishing. Mm. You see actual fishers, mm. some people who are fishing. Some people are now tending, like there was animals, so there were sheep mm. in a pasture, <laughs> um, and I believe it was cattle. It was just sheep and cattle. Yeah. Uh, and it was horses, there were horses in a stable. Mm. Uh, but as uh, as all of these seeds began to drop, it, it basically brought life and put life into the mm. into the into the river with fish into the the earth with our, our people mm. and as this happened then the final scene is um finally the the people who are praying up in the heavenly realms mm. come down to earth mm. and there's there is their prayer isn't as fervent but it's almost like a more intimate Mm. prayer I mm. guess you could say it's a mm. soft it's a softer prayer mm. and as that happens the uh, the clouds that are covering dissipate completely mm. um, and it exposes uh, now the, the sun that's just as bright and just as brilliant but it's not scorching mm. but the skies are blue clear clean and it leaves kind of this almost like a new creation mm. of, of land over Mm. Uh, what was to be a barren mm. wasteland. Mm. Wow. 
That's something else. <laughs> Chasing has such amazing visionary gifts. Amazing to me. Yeah. Mm hmm. Understanding. I I don't have anything specific. <laughs> I think the prayer and with the coming rain were obviously were important. Go ahead, Tim. Mm. Well, there's some obvious imagery connection with both visions to a couple of things. One, they're both in Revelation and related to the, the pouring out of the seven bowls of wrath. Mm. Um, you know, the setting here is, this is later in John's writing, mm. and uh, obviously the... the uh, the sun company has already been caught up to the throne of God mm. and then judgments are parsed out in the earth mm. uh, there's a couple that stand out one is <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the fifth angel says he poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and his kingdom was plunged into darkness Mm. So there's some relationship to the the shroud of darkness. Mm. Um, of course, for God's people, the Lord says that the deep darkness is like the light of day, mm. because in Him there is no darkness, even though He comes shrouded in darkness. It's, it's an interesting <clears throat> paradox there. Mm. And then it talks about the seventh angel as well. Um, after the sixth angel, you know, these false spirits go out to gather all the kings of the world for the great battle mm -hmm. in Armageddon. Mm -hmm. And then verse 17, the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, it is done. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the it is done there means not something coming to an end, but rather the great coming forth of something that's been waited for. Mm. So the, the essence of, of it is while the woman is pregnant and waiting for birthing out, mm. for the sun to come to be, mm. that once the sun is born, it's done. Mm. What was intended to happen is now happening Company. so that's the it is done mm. that is being stated here and it actually is very directly correlated mm. to the manifestation of the sons of god mm. in the earth mm. it's done it's finally happened mm. is what that mm. phrase in the greek means then there came flashes of lightning rumblings peals of thunder and a severe earthquake mm. no earthquake like it has ever occurred since there, since man has been on earth, mm. so tremendous was the earthquake. <clears throat> the great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Mm. Every island fled away, and the mountains could not be found. Mm. From the sky, huge hailstones of about a hundred pounds each fell upon men mm. and they cursed God on the account of the plague of the hail mm. because the plague was so terrible. Mm. So leading of course, not only to the fall of Jerusalem, but the descend, uh, sorry, the fall of Babylon mm. and the descending mm. of the heavenly Jerusalem mm. to the earthly realm. The earth realm. Yeah. So mm. some interesting, I think that the, the visions are, you know, seem to be somewhat insightful of uh, the combination of this imagery, but from the perspective of heaven mm. and God's work in it. Mm. So much of Revelation is from the perspective of the judgment. Those are those that are being judged. And what's hidden, it's not that it's not existent. Mm. Interestingly, the, the 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 revelation excuse me the the judgment described in revelation has been like a veil over the mind of christianity mm. they've only seen 
the the outpouring of God's wrath on something other than themselves. Mm -hmm. But they and and there is truth to that. But what has remained completely veiled is the perspective from the throne room. What it means for God's people. It's there. And these are, in essence, they are things that were sealed up in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel's mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And God told them that he was going to open up the understanding mm. or the revelation of what was to be in that time, in that time. Mm. And even, uh, you know, Jesus told John something similar mm. and saying, let this he, he didn't say to seal this up except for the the seventh seal was to remain or excuse me the seventh thunder i know i'm talking a lot of different mm. language there mm -hmm. but that was the only thing that was remaining to be unopened mm. in in the revelation that jesus gave to john mm. and so the indication was and always has been in scripture that and, and it, it's also been the case that God reveals when he intends to. Mm. No matter how hard man searches, mm. even religious men, even God-fearing men, mm. no matter how much they long to look into it, mm. it's not going to be revealed until God's appointed time. Mm. And so part we see those things unfold historically with God's people. We see Jesus unfold that in part to his disciples mm. when he says, many prophets and kings even the angels have looked into this and wanted to know. Mm. They've wanted to understand, but you're the ones to whom it's been given. Paul adds on to that and says, upon us whom the fulfillment of the ages has come, mm. but he still reserves something that is yet to be revealed as well. Sorry. And so, you know, that's something for us to consider. Mm. You know, I was actually talking with, interestingly, with this, with Andy last night, we were driving about mm. how... Most, mo most often, mm. than a generation upon whom certain fulfillments came, they were completely unaware of it, mm. even though God pointed it out. Mm. So, you know, the example I was using in our conversation was the generation of the Israelites upon whom liberty was going to come. They were still slaves, mm. but the word of God was already given 400 five six hundred years before that's right and it was passed down well there's going to be a generation there's going to be a generation there's going to be a generation yeah. there's going to be a generation mm. but the one upon whom those two were to be delivered said well it's not us mm. we'd rather stay here mm. you know and then they they very uh there was a lot of resistance they resisted moses mm. even his own family resisted him all those things so jesus it was the exact same thing mm. he's, he's like you guys can you know how to you know when the crops are gonna be right you know when the rains are gonna come yeah. you know when it's gonna get cold you know when it's gonna be hot yeah. and you think you know everything about God's will but you don't know when it's happening right in front of your face yeah. you, you haven't you don't you haven't perceived what God's doing mm. so he Jesus himself the apostles the, the apostles and the prophets all said that's the way it's gonna be in the last day too mm -hmm. they're not gonna know what's happening yeah they're going to be completely ignorant. The generation is going to be living the, the anointing and the Savior, the salvation of God is going to come, and they're not even going to know. The most, you know, so back to the principle of the remnant, there are not many, going to be many that know. So, you know, these are, I want us to see that in the way that the Spirit is revealing certain things, God's, I mean, the words of the past are very relevant now. And, and, and one declaration in the heavenly realms is, your salvation is drawing nigh. Now, that's something that we have also heard multiple times over the last three or four years from the saints in Kenya mm -hmm. when they've had dreams and visions. They are seeing the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. They are seeing the fulfillment of the plan of God coming. And they are they warn themselves and they warn us through prophetic reception uh -huh. in the spirit to say, yeah. sober your mind, sober your heart, posture your heart, be prepared. Mm. You know, what did this I mean, what did that say just before, prior to that? Behold, same chapter, oh. verse 15 and in, 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 in chapter 16 of Revelation. Mm. 
Behold, I come like a thief. Yes. Blessed is he who stays awake mm. and keeps his clothes with him, the <laughs> garment of Christ on him, so that he may not go naked and be, uh-oh, what word did we just use several times throughout these visions? Mm. Exposed. Mm. Wow. Darkness exposed mm. by light. Mm. Mm. The warning is right there. Mm. I didn't even know that Jesus said that until mm -hmm. I turned there. So, wow. anyway, this is a, a pretty. I know that we. It seems often mm -hmm. that we are very grandiose, mm -hmm. or it, it spiritually hyperbolistic mm -hmm. in our in our uh, mm -hmm. exposition. Mm -hmm. But brothers and sisters, you know, I did not put one. The only thinking I did about today mm. and what would be shared today mm. was to think about what might be shared today. Mm. That was it. I didn't think what would be shared. Mm. I just thought, huh, I wonder what's going to be shared today. <laughs> you know, I had, a, I had, I, I didn't even ask the Lord, well, what should I say? What should I do? Mm. Because I already knew, well, the Lord was going to do something. Mm. And so uh, my point is not pointing at myself or Emmanuel. It's just mm -hmm. to say we didn't, we don't think of these things ahead of time. Mm -hmm. We really want to to get in line with the heartbeat, yes. you know, the the current pulse mm -hmm. of God. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. pulse is what? It's a flow, right? Mm -hmm. It's your, it's the blood flow. Mm -hmm. The life is in the blood. Yes. What is the pulse of God's life mm. now mm. for this season, yes. for this day, for this person, for this circumstance, mm. for this moment? There's always a pulse. Mm. So we're, we're taught to take our own pulse, mm. physically, spiritually, otherwise. Mm. At, when do we extend our hand, our heart to the to the touch of God mm. to take his pulse what's your pulse what's your heartbeat yes what's the flow in you yes now here's something fascinating about human anatomy and physiology mm. <clears throat> when two bodies come close together mm. in a very short period of time their heartbeats will match mm. Mm. They, 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 they synchronize. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Yes, harmony, harmony, harmonize. Well, they actually synchronize. Synchronize, okay. I yeah. mean, surely there is harmony in all <laughs> yeah, of that, yeah. well, that. But it's the okay. same heartbeat. Oh, wow. It's the same heartbeat. Lord, give us that, Lord. Give us that. That's what we, that's obviously what we want. Mm -hmm. That's what, in essence, in, in, in one of its very primal essences that's what the process of discipleship is to produce mm. in a human life yes that they can so draw near to god so as to know his heartbeat and that heartbeat become their own <laughs> that's what we pray for it's what we sing about Beautiful. it's what we ask of god yes the and you know that's the the sentiment of of the, the, the revelators in mm. Scripture mm. are always draw near to God. Yes. Come near to me. Thank you, Jesus. That's where your safety, Thank your you, salvation, Jesus. and fulfillment will be. Thank you. In your Jesus. nearness to me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Not a distance. Yes. Not from a distance. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Well, who can wrap up for us today? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm excited, Talia. Thank you, Father. Do you guys mind if I share a vision that I think goes oh, along yes. with this that I had yeah. two years ago? The mm. Lord told me you have a vision. I'm just so free to ask. So, <laughs> yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know the relevance until now. Mm. Uh, so. I don't know if it, I don't think it was me. I don't know. It was just some somebody was getting dressed, mm -hmm. getting ready to leave the house. Mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, stepped outside in shorts and a t-shirt, but it was snowing. Mm. So it was like almost a panic because mm -hmm. late or something. So they didn't really want to change. But they went back in and changed into winter clothes. Mm -hmm. um, and it took quite a while because it, you know, was a lot of layers and snow suits and mm -hmm. masks and gloves and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, when they went outside, the weather was different again. Mm -hmm. And so they went back in and where, when I was asking for revelation on what, I mean, that was, that was it. Mm -hmm. And when I was asking for revelation mm -hmm. about it, this verse is what the Lord brought me to mm -hmm. uh, in John 3, 8. Mm. that says the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it mm. but do not where it comes from and where it is going mm. so is everyone who is born in the spirit mm. Mm. so uh, it just felt like a confirmation to what Tim was just saying so I just wanted to mm. Mm. can you expound on that connection mm. Your pers what? Yeah, my perspective. Uh, yeah, um, it kind of brought me to Song of Solomon, actually, or Song of Songs. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see the verse. Hold on, just a second. Look. Okay, um, I was asleep, but my heart was awake. A voice. My beloved was knocking. Open to me, my sister, my darling, my dove, my mm. perfect one. For my head is drenched with dew, my locks with damp. Uh, I don't know if you want me to read all of that. Hmm. I don't know if I can. Um, the sentiment that I was hearing from the Lord was to be ready for the season. Mm. Uh, and to look at the forecast mm. Mm. before we step outside. Because if mm. we don't, and we just assume it's going to be the way it has always been mm -hmm. then step out it's not going to be the right season and we might miss mm -hmm. what that season of what he is doing in in his bride mm -hmm. um, thank you that, uh, that was very helpful mm -hmm. okay thank you mm -hmm. thank you lord i feel i share with justin a little bit but i feel led to, to share some scripture this year so for the region New streams. Amen. New streams. <laughs> Isaiah 43 said, in 18 said, let me be fast. Forget the former thing. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive, perceive it? it? I'm making a way in the desert, a stream in the wasteland. Hallelujah. And move on to 44 in the beginning. But now listen, Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. This is what the Lord said, who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you. Do not be afraid, O Jacob, my servant, and Joshua, my, whom I, choose, I have chosen. For I will pour water on the thirsty land, and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. They will spring up like grass in the meadow, like a poplar tree by flowing streams. I will say I belong to the Lord. I will call himself by the name of Jacob. So another will write on his hand the Lord's. I will make will take the name of Israel. Earlier I was saying the Lord brought me to, <laughs> to Psalm 84. I totally didn't go through it, the Holy Pilgrimage. But in the middle of that, talking about this, said in five, said, Blessed are those whose, whose strength are in you. For I will set the hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley back on, they will make it a place of spring. All the moraine 
for all so covered that will go from strength to strength till each appear before God in Zion. And then said this, for the, the eleven said, For the Lord God is a sun, the shield, <laughs> the Lord best to fear and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is a blameless. You can't have a better vision than this. <laughs> scriptures. <laughs> Justin, I think you should wrap up for us. <laughs> That's amazing to me. God teaching us scripture in the living way. Amen. Well, Father, we thank you that you are doing new things. Lord, that your mercies are new each day. Father, that you desire uh, to make all things new. And Lord, our, our hearts are to be renewed, not just daily, but with each, each moment as we meditate upon your truth, as we consider how we relate to you and, and to one another. Lord, would you continually transform our minds and hearts? Lord, the ways that we, that we walk, Lord, would we be a people that is known by the way we are continually renewed in your presence, by your spirit, by your power. And Lord, let it not uh, let not the enemy deceive us into be, being religious in the way we go about things, mm. Father. But but let us truly flow in and with your spirit. Let us truly be sober minded to put on the robe of your righteousness Hallelujah. Lord, to be for whatever comes because we are clothed in Christ mm. not in our own understandings not in our own efforts mm. not in not in our own uh, wisdom mm. thank you. Father I thank you Lord for your heart for your sons Lord that it is your desire to to speak to us to encourage our hearts and, and to compel us to move towards your ways, mm. to walk as, as a very real way of life in every moment. Thanks. So, Father, we, we do give you this day, Lord. And again, just proclaim your goodness in it, Lord, for even what is before us for the remainder of the day. Thank you, Lord. Father, with, uh, with Niles and the Fry family, mm. Lord, we continue to turn that over to you. Bless, Lord, and, and bless, Lord, for, bless. for that renewing work to be done in Niles' life. Love Lord, that he fully established mm -hmm. in your purposes. Lord, that he would fully walk in the giftings that you've given him, mm. uh, Lord, and, and that you would continue to do this work in all of us. Lord, we're reminded that your word says, he who has begun a good work in us will complete it mm. and so father i pray that you renew us each day in jesus name in jesus amen amen, amen. bless the lord, bless bon the lord. Bon. Bon. let's wrap it up mm -hmm.